It is time for Dr. Judy Werpin and Food for Mood. Judy is the co-author of the Serotonin Power Diet, serotoninpowerdiet.com. Also, author of Simon Loses His Tummy and her latest book, uh, Before Her Voice Was Still. Good morning, Dr. Werpin. Good, good morning to you, and I think what you're doing is, is really wonderful. I, we've also sort of reached out and try to help people who are unfortunately are not able to, to work right now and not sure when they will be able to. Um, you know, it, it, this whole thing is affecting all of us. And it occurred to me that, you know, in chatting with my friends, because all you can do is talk to them on the telephone, one of the things that's happening is that, you know, as we find ourselves more and more in isolated situations, we turn to the things that we always do to get comfort. And for some of us, it's it's eating. And for some people, it may be drinking. And I don't know whether enough attention really has been directed toward these behaviors, which you know, may be comforting in the short run, but really may have rather bad health effects, you know, in, in the long run. And what was very uh, interesting, I thought, was keeping the package stores open, etc., because yes. uh, as essential, um, mostly in, I, I, I don't know if this is the reason, but I, you know, this, what, what the health system cannot support at this point is a massive, massive withdrawal. That that you know you're absolutely right, Jill. Um, but, but you know the, the behaviors that some of us uh, tend to do in isolation anyway, like somebody who's a binge eater or a binge drinker, looks for situations where there's not going to be any interruption by other people either, or the need to control yourself because on Monday morning you've got to go to work so you can't, you know, go on a, a, an alcoholic binge or an eating binge over the weekend because you have to get up on Monday morning and be there at your workplace. Now those restraints are gone. Nobody really knows what you're eating. If you want to, you know, live on chocolate cake for the next week and not have a green vegetable until April, okay, nobody really knows. <laughs> if you want to, you know, buy whatever you need or want in that liquor store and consume it in the next week, nobody really knows. And I think one of the aspects of this, Jill, is that the you, you're saying, right, nobody wants to, people to go through alcoholic withdrawal, but on the other hand, what hospital facilities are going to be available if you are not paying attention to your diabetic status and your blood sugar is increasing enormously, or you're not paying attention to, uh, you know, your you know, say your hypertension because of what you're eating and, and your blood pressure goes up, who is going to take care of you? And I, I think that's a, a part of the equation that people just aren't looking at. You know, it's so easy to say, oh, I can do what I want. Really, nobody cares. You know, it, life it may be very short. We don't know when I'm going to get the virus. And so it doesn't matter if I simply binge and, and, and start gaining weight and all of the consequences of doing so um, will start to show up. What you don't realize is there's not going to be an internist. There's not going to be a doctor at the other end. There's not going to be anybody in the emergency room who's going to be able to take care of you. And and you and, and this is something you have to realize. We are on our own. And if we don't take care of our health now, and if we don't uh, you know, sort of ex- exert some kind of self-discipline so we don't fall into those behaviors that are so easy to fall into when we're isolated and bored and anxious and lonely and scared. Again, we're the ones who may be promoting those bad behaviors, but we're the ones who who are going to have to deal with the consequences, not anybody else. And I, I think that conversely, you know, you can say, well, this is a time when I can read cookbooks. This is a time when I have no excuse for not preparing meals that may take an hour to prepare as opposed to 15 minutes or five minutes. This is the time when I can you know, experiment with long, with the cooking that we may be required for, for beans or, or lentils or grains. This is a time when I can figure out, you know, how to eat vegetarian because, you know, I, I can't go to the supermarket all the time and get meat. And, and by the way, it's a healthy, you know, to perhaps eat less meat and start eating vegetarian foods or whole grains or potatoes, etc. This is a time when you really can start promoting those healthy eating behaviors <clears throat> that you you did not do so because you always had the excuse, I don't have the time. So I have a different question around that. Given that in a lot of cases there is either disease or um, uh, side effects around uh, uh, medication that, uh, that, that causes this, uh, 
eating. Yeah. Um, how, you know, it, how is it not a little bit like exercising? People have plenty of time to exercise, and there are people that, you, you, you know, it breaks along the usual lines. People who regularly exercise, exercise, and go, okay, right. I can take a walk, and okay, this is, I can make a structure around my care, yeah, you know. And then people who don't go the direction that you're talking about because no one's going to really know. No, you, you, that's right. But you know, but, but the, the, the thing that has changed, Jill, is that in the past, if you said, oh, I don't really care what I eat, I'm not going to exercise, who cares? You know, there's an orthopedist to take care of me if my knee goes out, and there's a, an internist to take care of me if, if I suddenly develop diabetes or any of the other diseases that are let's say, associated with obesity. There is no one to take care of you now. I mean, you walk into an emergency room, and if you don't have the coronavirus and you're not dying of a heart attack, you might as well go home again. And so it is, you know, we always talk about, you have especially, personal responsibility. And you know, just as we're taking personal responsibility for you know, wearing a mask, wearing gloves, washing our hands, wiping down surfaces... We have to take responsibility for our health because our health care system is overwhelmed with people who are dying. And, and we cannot jeopardize our own life or, or even take, you know, ask for care for some self-inflicted you know, health problem like binge drinking or binge eating. We can't take a doctor away from somebody who might be seriously ill with the coronavirus to deal with our self-imposed health problem. Well, that's a really so, good I, no, I think that's a really good way of looking at it, and I would like to do an unscientific study. You know what's interesting here in Connecticut uh, with the coronavirus, Dr. Workman, and I think you'll find this, it, it runs counter to what's happening in the rest of the country. The highest rate uh, in Connecticut uh, is in the 50 to 59 group. But listen to this. Um, uh, the next highest rate is not the 60 to 65, but it's the 40 to 49. And then the next highest rate after that is the 30 to 39, and even the young uh, rate, 20 to 29, is almost equal to what the 60 to 69 uh, rate is. So it's a, dis- it's a different distribution uh, yeah. of Would the virus. Yeah, you like my theory? Yeah. You sure? What's your theory? Uh, my theory is... There is... Any, any reason? For, I mean, what, what is the explanation? The, yeah, I have no idea what the explanation is, but the theory, here, here, here is my theory. I hope you're all sitting down. Um, the, the generation, the, the ones who aren't, already grew up, they know what privation is, they, they grew up with square, I, I hate to say this, they grew up with those seven building blocks and square meals and parents who made them sit and eat. It, and this next yeah. lot going down is Anybody the, under 19 is the lowest, but really the 70 to 79 and the 80 and older are like fifth on the list in Connecticut so far. Yeah, because they, because they, they are listening to the recommendations, yeah. they're taking care of themselves, yeah. they're staying home. I think you're right, and it, it occurred to me, we have generations of people who never cooked, right. who don't know what it's like to boil an egg, who wouldn't know how to turn lettuce into a salad, or to, to even cook frozen vegetables. And we'll happily pay <laughs> you know, $12 for, for, I mean, really and truly, it's just amazing, with $12 for a serving of something that should actually be about 46 cents but that, that's but, exactly right i mean look the, we have what we have is time unfortunately for some of us too much time and too little opportunities to work but you can go on the internet and learn how to boil learn. an egg or or cook you know rice or or you know make a salad or or make pasta or what have you that that is not that is healthy, that's giving you the nutrients you need. You, you can go off to, you know, the, the, the drugstore and buy some vitamin pills if you're not eating well. It, we, we, you know, I think that the personal responsibility for our health has to go beyond washing our hands. And if we don't start doing that, again, we are going to be the ones who have to take care of ourselves or the people living with us, and it's not going to be a pretty picture. So you know, maybe if we do, we'll come out healthier. You know, if we don't, you know, if we don't give in to, gee, I'm by myself, I can eat what I want, I can drink what I want, I don't have to pay attention to this. Because as you, I think most of those statistics may be making people, if you're not healthy, if you're not eating right, you may be even more vulnerable to the virus. Who knows? But, you know. It's worth, it's, it's, it's worth doing that way. To stay healthy. Thank you very much. All righty. Bye-bye. <laughs> Dr. Judy Wortman, Food for Mood. And you can hear Judy Wortman with Food for Mood every Thursday morning here on Robin Hood Radio. Also find Judy at RobinHoodRadio.com on demand.